you are programming tutorial series programming with victor scratch edition in this video i will show you how to add some enemy ai and collectibles to our scrolling maze game which if you haven't already made you should go to the previous video as i will show you how to create a scrolling maze which is basically just a maze which moves along with the player it's pretty f it's pretty fun to make and it's interesting so make sure to check out the video as this video you can't you can't complete this video without using that one so if you have already watched that video and completed the game which by the way if you can't or for some reason don't understand something there is a link in the bio to a project of the engine of the last video so if you are stuck by anything and don't get it go to that project watch the code and see if there uh, see if there's any differences and then if not you can just use some code from that project because that project is there to help people and don't feel bad if you have to use it that's what it's that's what it's there for so to start we need to open you can play your game so first of all let's see it it should work like this if there's any glitches then just go through the code and see if there's any errors like i said earlier there's a project in the bio in the link which has all the proper code so you can compare yours with mine and see if there's any errors so let's look at our game it might it might look like something's missing though which is enemies i mean it's pretty easy to go to the finish button even if there's more obstacles you'll do it eventually so how can you make this a bit harder as this isn't really much of a game so we can do this by adding some enemies ai ai which are going to be some npcs which will chase us so let's create first of all let's create some player art it doesn't have to be anything elaborate if you want you can just google bees and get a png of that but it shouldn't really work it won't, it won't work that well so i'd recommend you just do something simple like what am i do what i'm doing here and just do the generic b it's pretty easy to create as you do first of all one black dot as the eye Then you have to do, then you just do some stripes. Make, let's make this a little happy bee. And then draw some wings. This is just a quick drawing. I am going to make something more elaborate and a bit better. But this, this you get the point from this. So I'm going to add some wings because a bee without wings is kind of weird. Not going to lie. So. Once we do that, let's add a little wing onto it. So we have now got a quick dr bee drawing. So, however, it's a bit big. I mean, it's big as as big as a bear. That 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 just doesn't make sense. Oh, so we just need to scale this a bit low, a bit lower, so that of it it doesn't have the real size of a bee as that be tiny and you barely can see on the screen. Let's make it a bit bigger. So, the reason I chose bees is because we're going to make the collectibles honey and, you know, bees want to keep their honey and they want best to take it. So, how, but, however, as you can see here, it just stays in one place, doesn't do anything. It's just kind of there for decoration. And it's going through walls. So, first of all, we need to make it chase the player. So, to start, do a one green flat, red, green flat clicked. We need to make it go to a specific area. For example, I'm gonna make it go to these coordinates. However, you can you can just move it around and make it go to the coordinates you want. Next, we have to change the rotation style so that it's all around. Next, do on repeat until and leave that blank. That just gives it a forever loop, and make it point to up the player, which we can use this function. However, just make sure you change the mouse pointer to the sprite. And now, as you can see, it should backwardsly point to the bear. Now, this might be a bit confusing, like, why is it backwards? So, we just need to turn this around horizontal and vertical. 
and as you can see here it should point to the bear but it just looks like it's staying on one place as we're not moving the bee so let's change that let's move the bee so that when it's when the when the it's not touching the map if using an if statement touching for example for some reason map is called sprite one and then let's make it move forward one one step don't change what making go forward one x as that just randomly changes it make sure that it's make make sure that it's one step or you can do two step it just changes the speed now however there's a weird glitch once it's once it stays for too long on the bear it just randomly flips along so how can we change that well first of all go to the sprite one code and then just drag this into the b i know it's a bit lazy to this drag code however you made it so you can do that and it saves time and if you know anything about programming one thing that's really good is to save time as you know it's more efficient programmers like their code to be efficient not just long and then hard to check if there's any bugs just make it nice and efficient now as you can see here we have a b which once you go you scroll away it also scrolls away until you stop that way the b will chase you afterwards so we've made a quick and simple ai however there's a weird glitch, however, so as you can see here, when the beat is on the far right, far top, or far left, it just randomly merges into a wall. So how can we do this? Well, first of all, let's open another one green flag clicked, get a forever loop in there, and then get some if statements. First of all, we are going to do if x position is big smaller than what then minus how is how is it what's gonna be let's see okay so let's do minus 240 then hide however wait do an if different if statement with the else as well so move that then get a hide and the show what basically it does is it covers the sprite if it's if the x position is smaller than 240 and it also it also makes it show again once it is however 240 doesn't seem big enough as as you can see here once i move even if it even if it's 239 it still shows so let's just change that to minus 235. Let's see how that works. It's still kind of glitchy, so let's change it to 230. Yeah, that works. However, this make sure that you do run and just don't randomly stop because the bee will find a way around. So what, let's do that for every side. So change that so that it's positive 240. Always make sure that it shows as well first. Flip it around. There we go. Move that. There we go, we have now got some enemy AI. We can then multiply this as giving it more by just double clicking this. But now you might realize something. What if we, it doesn't really help if we if the bee catches us as we can just walk away and go to the other side. Well, to fix this, we need to add, of course, a can a uh, fail button and we can do this by just quickly writing fail but black writing 
on some red. And doing this so that normally it does hide. What let's do on green flag hide. But however do forever if if sorry just a quick accidentally tap something else if we then if the let's go to be and right if touching player which is bear walking then broadcast message one so we go we should go back to the best right the go when i receive message one then we have to go back to this one and write show and then also do go in control and then find the stop all function which just closes the game so as you can see here, once the bee touches the bear, it fails. Let's give the player five seconds, however, to move, as it's pretty impossible to play the game right now. So let's give five seconds. Then. So. Make sure to put the five seconds after the go to function. So now we have s the player has some time to run, run, run. Player, the bee is coming. Next, we need to f we need to add some honey to give the game mo some more purpose. So let's add some collectibles. Well, the first thing I would recommend that you do is create this green frame as it allows the bee to teleport as you can see here once i move away from the bee and i outrun it if you wait certain long enough you can see the bees, bees coming back at us so that's just a quick good thing to add the next thing we're going to add is we're going to change the speed of the bee for the player to choose so we can do this by creating a new variable which we're going to call bear speed right clicking on it and then you should see this press on slider right click again and press change slider range now do the minimum value for it to be one and the maximum value to be five now as you can see here it goes from one to five depending on how long how much you are pulling it so how can we use this to change the speed? Well, grab one of the B speed variables from here and make it move a certain number of steps. This will either increase the speeds of the B or it will decrease the speed. I'd recommend you go on a, a good level of four as that's a pretty good speed. And now you can outrun it. However, once you, once you find out it's too slow, you can turn it to five. Just make sure that you what it called. Uh, it's hard. Just go to four. That's what I recommend. And make sure that you don't just keep pressing an arrow once you're doing this. Some collectibles. First thing I want you to do is go to the frame ver go to the frame sprite and just bam the go forward one layer button. Once you have done that, go back and create a new sprite. Just do a quick circle. It doesn't have to be anything complicated. And you sh then you should see nothing. This is just because I've already written the code to make it simpler. Now, we are going to be creating some honey, in inverted commas, that will run away from us. Not very applying the laws of nature, but it will work for this game. First thing we want to do is 
make it go to a coordinate that we want. So for my example, I'm making it at minus 49 for the y and 24 for the x. I know that's not how you say it mathematically, but it doesn't matter. But and now that's the first thing you need to do. Next, go to motion, get the set rotation style to left and right, and then change that to don't rotate. You can make it rotate, but for my example, it's a circle, so it's not gonna do any anything different. Next, get the forever loop from the control section. Get a point towards bear walking. That's what my sprite is named. Your sprite can be named something else. Doesn't matter. Get an if statement. Get a non, not, uh, operator from the operator section, and then get to set go to send and get a touching sprite one, and then make it go to motion and get the first block that says moving ten steps. Change that to minus two steps, and now it should run away from you, but it will phase through walls. So, like, how are we going to do that? Well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a green, another green when green flag is clicked and change it to, and then get the end operator from the operator section, get the touching sprite one, and the one key, for example, right arrow is pressed from the sensing. Then go to motion, get the change X by, and then change for that from a 10 to a 5 if it, if you selected the right arrow. Now, it should make sure that when the right arrow is pressed and it's touching the wall, it will go the other way. Now, you can't really see this because it's going outwards. So, I'm going to get one of these. Now, when, when it's touching the wall and the down arrow is pressed, it, it should just stay there. And... I know it doesn't disappear when we touch it, but we're going to add that later. Next, get the when up arrow is pressed. Now, if we're pressing the up arrow and it happens to be touching the wall, it's not going to it's not going to just go through the wall. And do that for the same for the left arrow. Make sure you don't confuse the x's for the y's like I've just done. Very it's just an annoying mistake change that there we go I also changed that there now it's gonna be running away from us and not just phasing through walls next we need to make it you know collectible so we can do this by going to when green flag is clicked get a forever looped and then say if touching bear walking and then hide now it's just gonna hide make sure you do a show after the green when the green flag it's just gonna hide when we touch it it's not gonna change anything so let's change that and add a new variable called score now we're gonna right click and make that a large readout and go to when after when green flag clicked set score to zero because we don't want it to be like five thousand and then change it so next make sure that this is score again also delete the my variables because it's kind of annoying and then change score by one now when we're touching it it should change the score and hide now let's reintroduce our fail sign there we go and now we can see we've added an enemy and the collectible to add more collectibles just duplicate these and just keep on changing the coordinates so that there's more to collect in the next video i will show you how to add a oh just a second to stop to stop working i will in the next video i will show you how to add a to put patch up some errors and how to put more of these so we're also going to be introducing a win statement for example right now if i go to the finish it doesn't really do anything but we're going to change that so that it gives us a win statement so make sure you subscribe like this video and then you should know how to do that by the end of next video thanks for watching this is victor